Hey, welcome back to Hacksmith. I'm Joseph, a developer advocate with AppSmith. And in today's video, we're going to learn how to make a dynamic modal. So you can use one modal to show different confirmation messages and run a different action based on each message. All right, let's get hacking. So here I've got a modal. There's a confirmation button, a cancel that would close the modal and you would have your confirm button bound to an API or a query, maybe a JS object. And then somewhere else in your app, you'll have another action that you wanna have a modal for or a way to preview something. And so you might end up having multiple modals throughout your app, uh, which can be difficult to keep them all formatted the same or if you're trying to size them and keep things consistent. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make a dynamic modal. So you can use one modal, pull up different confirmation messages and run different actions based on a config file that we'll store in the AppSmith store. All right, let's check it out in the app. First, I've got three different modals here and each one is using a completely separate modal. So it has its own action here. It runs this delete action and shows a uh, warning icon here. The update one is modal two and that's running a different function. We've got a success there. And on the third one here, uh, another action, it runs its own function, and then we've got a different type of feedback. So we can tell that it's not just a different modal, but it's running a different action. And then on this fourth one here, this pulls up a modal where everything is a parameter. I'm loading up the color, the icon, the title, what the message is here, the labels for these buttons, and even the action that it runs. So right now, it says it's gonna run the delete, and so we're getting that delete confirmation. But if I come over here and uh, I'm gonna change the function that we're running. Just throw in a few extra things here and make it green. All right. And so it's using the same one modal, changing the title, changing the icons and everything. And so the first half of this is just building that config, storing it, and then opening the modal and it loads up all of those parameters. But then when you want this button to run a different function based on the config, there's a second function. So let's check this out in the editor here. And you'll see that the first buttons here, um, let's look at the original ones. And so they just open a modal. You know, this opens modal two, modal three. But then when we get to the last one, it's running this JS object one dynamic modal open. And this is just one big parameter. So I'm passing in all of the values needed to populate that modal as a single object, single parameter, instead of writing each one to a separate point in the AppSmith store. It's better for performance instead of each one of these being a separate stored value. So we enter that one parameter, the whole object, and then open the modal. And that's in this open modal function here. So it just uses a async function. You wanna make sure that you store the value and completely finish storing it before you open the modal so it doesn't flash and show the previous value. And so we await the stored value and then I'm assigning everything to a variable here from the config just by destructuring it. Um, show the modal and then return the value just for debugging purposes. And then when it comes time to close the modal, when you click confirm, uh, the confirm action is taken from up here um, from the same way that it's found from the config. And then based on what that is, we're gonna show an alert saying what you're confirming. And so there's a switch and it looks at, for each case, if your confirm action in the config is simulate delete API, then it's gonna run this JS object. If it is uh, view details, it just wants to open the modal. So this can be a single line, it could be a couple different steps, or it could be a whole other JS object. And anytime you wanna use that modal for a new purpose, you would just add a new set of, in this case, do this and then break. And so with that type of setup, you could have, we could replace all of these buttons and use the same one modal to run any action. And in this case, you, you're getting a confirmation on a delete. If you wanted, you could 
throw in some extra widgets here that show you what it is you're deleting. And then we can look at the selected row of the table. This way you get a confirmation that's specific to what action it's going to run on which row, uh, give the user a little bit more information, and then you won't have to maintain a bunch of different modals and try to get them all sized and aligned the same. So this has been our second video in the Hacksmith series. Stay tuned for more and don't forget to subscribe.